Hey everybody, Jim Powers with SB Live in Oregon and the Class 6A championship game is this coming weekend and a team that is no stranger to being there is the Central Catholic Rams and their head coach Steve Pine joins us and Steve, first off, congratulations. Outstanding season for you guys so far. Let's talk a little bit first about the season and how you guys have gotten to this point. Well, thanks for, for having me, one. Two, uh, you know, uh, I thought going into the season, we had a chance to be competitive. Uh, it was interesting to kind of go through COVID in the spring and, and play a shortened schedule. And, you know, you don't really get a sense of maybe how good you are or how bad you might be. Um, but we come out against Camus in week one, and it was a great program from Southwest Washington and uh, played reasonably well uh, for a first game, had some big plays and started seeing some things, especially from our defense that I was, I was really excited about. And then uh, in week three, uh, we had a game canceled because of COVID, uh, like on a Thursday, and turned around and uh, scheduled a game with Tumwater uh, up, up in Washington and a phenomenal program with a storied history. And they're playing in the Washington State Championship this weekend, and they run the wing tee. And we <laughs> had about you know a, a one-hour practice to prepare for it and went up there and, and beat them in overtime. And at that point, I was thinking, okay, we, we, we have a chance. Uh, you know, and then we get into our league and our league is down this year uh, a little bit. And uh, so we went five weeks kind of having running clocks. And so you were a little bit worried that maybe, I mean, think we're okay, but don't know. And then we ended up playing Clackamas in week nine and they were an excellent team. And, and we ended up just taking control of that game in the second half. And after that, I thought we might have a chance to get there. Uh, and maybe just be good enough to, to win it if we're fortunate to get there. So here we are. Talk a little bit about just, you know, one step away, everything these kids have gone through and your coaching staff as well has gone through in the last 19 months, not being able to play last fall, having to turn around an abbreviated schedule with no playoffs in the spring, and then trying to get back to some sense of normalcy to go on the incredible run that you guys have had this year. Yeah, I was, I was mentioning to one of our coaches the other day, I was like, I'm exhausted. It feels like we've been playing for, you know, since February, honestly. You know, you played six weeks and then you gave your kids a few weeks off and then started your, your off-season summer training. And uh, it's been great to see the kids uh, back together again, have some routine about their lives. Um, and, you know, just uh, create that, that bond that relationships that, that we find so important uh, in terms of, you know, finding success. And uh, it's been fun to see that development. It's been fun to see the younger kids uh, learn from the older kids who, who played in the 2019 game. And uh, so it, it's, been, it's been a blast. I, I, I mean, I'm, either way, I'm gonna be, you know, excited for Saturday to be done, you know, just, for everybody's mental health, just to walk away and, and know that we've had a great run, regardless of the outcome. Going into the game this week against Tualatin, you know, you guys are coming off the, the, the Holy War rival victory, so to say. How hard has it been to keep the kids, okay, you knocked off your arch rival, but now you've got to turn around and play in a, a state championship game, which a lot of people were really hoping that it was going to be you and Jesuit playing in a state championship game. Um, I you know, I don't think it's that hard. Uh, our kids know what they're what they're playing for this Saturday, um, and they know who they're playing. Uh, Twalton poses a much different challenge than Jesuit posed. Um, they're very similar in a lot of ways, schematically, uh, especially defensively, but personnel-wise, they are very different. They're long, they're athletic, uh, they're rangy, uh, they're senior heavy, where you know, Jesuit was a little smaller, quicker, uh, sophomore and junior heavy. So uh, it's going to be, our, I guarantee it, Tualatin has our kids and our coaches' attention. There's no question. Well, let's talk about your kids. And how about that sophomore quarterback you got in Crew Newman? I mean, Offensive Player of the Year. And for a sophomore quarterback, I don't care what state, what city, where you're at, for a sophomore to win a conference All-Player of the Year, that's got to be pretty special. 
Yeah, Crew's done a, an amazing job all year. He really understands what we do offensively um, as well as anyone that we've had probably, uh, even those guys that were seniors. He really understands the concepts of things. Um, he still makes some mistakes, but the, the thing is he has a, a sixth sense about him in terms of keeping plays alive. He did it time and again last Friday night, uh, you know, and it ended up, you know, kind of just being the difference, I think, or part of the difference in the second half is the ability to keep plays alive and not take sacks or uh, fortunately not to throw an interception a couple times, but uh he, he's just he's just savvy and competitive and uh, mature beyond his years. He's also got a couple really, really good weapons at his disposal, and I think one of them is your tight end, Riley Williams. And he's only a junior, and he's just had a terrific year for you guys. Yeah, Riley's a special talent. I mean, it, you know, the joke is, yeah, it's all coaching. Uh, it, you know, when you're 6'7", 235 pounds and can run like a deer, uh, it makes it a lot easier for quarterbacks and offensive coordinators to, to draw plays or call plays and know that they're probably going to get executed at a, a fairly high rate. Uh, Riley has a long way to go as a football player. He's extremely raw. Uh, and uh, some of that showed up last Friday night. Some of those, and I told him this on the sideline, uh, you're, some of your bad habits and practice are showing up in games when it matters. And, and he took it to heart and, uh, my guess is we might see a, a different kid if that's that's scary. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. Um, defensively, Amari and Winston, and you've had just a, a trio of Winstons come through. You know, he's committed to Oregon. Talk a little bit about him and the leadership that he brings to your defense. He has uh, been a leader since day one. He when He's extremely thoughtful when he speaks to his teammates. He demands a lot out of them, but he coaches them up as well. Uh, he's not the yeller and screamer, but when he talks, kids listen. And, uh, and he's backed it up with his play this year, quite honestly. I think he, you know, he was a little uh, heavy around the, uh, the midline last spring. And, and he, I think he uh, come to realize that he can't play as effectively at the weight that he was at last year and shed a few pounds and, and has been, um, you know, he's a terror and he's a terror in practice, which is awesome. He doesn't, I have to kick him off a scout team quite often, uh, you know, during practice because he just goes so hard, makes us better, but I more worried about him getting hurt, you know, uh, running scout team. Where do you compare him with his brothers? I know this is probably a loaded question, but you know, you've had three of them. Where does he compare to the other two? Um, he, he's a pretty good combination of Lamar and Elijah. He's, you know, Lamar was probably the best athlete, overall athlete of the three. Uh, Elijah was the bigger, thicker, uh, rangier guy. Uh, Marion's kind of somewhere between those two. But he's been a, the beneficiary of having two brothers go through our program and each of them having varying degrees of success. You know, so Lamar wins back to back state championships. Uh, Elijah gets to a state championship and loses. Um, you know, so, and then Lamar, you know, his senior year, uh, he just wasn't as focused as he probably could have been. And I think that tutelage from those two brothers about, you know, hey, don't sleep on your senior year. Hey, if you get an opportunity to get there, finish it kind of thing, have, have really benefited uh, Amarion. You know, and Amarion, yeah, and it seems like he's going to fit awfully well into the, you know, scheme of things at Oregon, especially with the way we run their defense, very similar to a lot of the stuff that you guys do. Yeah, I think so. I, he's a kid that, you know, he could step on campus and, and start to contribute uh, sooner than later. He's also a kid that honestly, they, they could put 25 or 30 pounds on and he could be playing with his hand on the ground, you know, so. Your defensive line, your lines, you know, apparently, you know, the, you, there was a nickname that was given out after the Jesuit game called the independent contractors. You know, talk a little bit about those guys. You know, when, when I do games, I always look at the guys up front because I, I honestly feel, and I felt this when I coached, you know, many years ago, that it was the offensive and defensive lines. That's how you're going to win games. 
Talk a little bit about the quote unquote independent independent contractors. Uh, we're just poking a little fun at our friends across the river. Um, that, that, this group has been really fun to watch develop. Um, we start one senior, and that's Gary Capalanga. He's been the, the anchor of that group all year long. Uh, we start a, a sophomore, a freshman, and two juniors. Uh, and so to see their development throughout the year, uh, Charlie Landgraf, our offensive line coach, has done an amazing job with those guys this year. Uh, they play with a lot of confidence. Uh, they play with a little bit or a lot of grit. They get after people. And they're pretty intelligent uh, as well in terms of being able to make line calls and, and communicate with each other. Um, they, you know, you don't throw, crew has, I don't know, 37 touchdowns to three interceptions. Uh, Ellis Bynum's, you know, averaging 12 and a half yards of carry going to the last Friday. That doesn't happen without good production up front. And uh, those guys, you know, are the unsung heroes of, of what we do. And that's why we kind of label them the independent contractors because they just come to work every day and work for a paycheck. Where does this team compare to the back-to-backs from 14-15 and then your other state championship? Where do you put this team in with that group? Well, that it's hard to compare anything to the 13-14 teams. I mean, those, those group, that group, I joke all the time, I'm like, a monkey could have won a state championship with that group. And a lot of people would argue a monkey did win a state championship with that group. Um, there was just so much talent. I mean, when you have five offensive linemen that played uh, at the college level and three of those on, on the scholarship uh, level, and you had Cam Scarlett, uh, who's playing for the Toronto Argonauts, and Ryan Nall, who's playing for the uh, Chicago Bears, and Blake Brandle, who's playing for the Minnesota Vikings, and Brady Breeze, who's playing for the Titans. I mean, on and on and on, right? So the comparison for me is to the 19 team. Uh, I think this team is similar in a lot of ways. Uh, I feel like um, you look at our receiving core in 19 was extremely good, but they weren't, you know, blazing fast or they were just solid, uh, you know, big, big, above average high school kids. I think this receiving crew has more speed. I think they understand the game a little bit better than that group did. Um, running game wise, I mean, Elijah Elliott and, and uh, Miles Jackson were, you know, as good of a one two punch as you could have. But Ellis Bynum and Jacob Hardeman have been, you know, on par with that this year comparatively. Um, I think where the real difference is for us is, is our team defense. Uh, that's been, uh, you know, we, outside of last week, we gave up 28 points. Uh, I think prior to that, we hadn't given up more than 21 and we were averaging about 10, 10.6 points a game. Uh, that, that gives you a real, uh, boost when you can hold your opponents, uh, to, to two or three scores a game, because we feel like we can move the ball on people and, and score. In order for you guys to get the state championship and, and to, to get the undefeated season, you know, who are going to be a few of the other kids that are going to need to step up and take control of the game on Saturday to, to really help you guys get that state title again? Well, offensively, I think Jordan King has to have a big game for us, just like he did last Friday um, at wide receiver. I think Zach Grisham and uh, Chibu Animu and Timmy Mitchell – and Strider Todd Fields and Jordan again, our secondary is gonna get tested. Um, I think our inside linebackers and Solon Sanders and Gibson Coyle uh, have to play well. They have to make their reads and, and get downhill and get to Malik before he gets started. And then uh, the other outside linebacker, Gavin Jackson, he's been phenomenal all year long and solid all year long. And I would expect nothing less than that from him on Saturday. Keys to victory against Walleton. Obviously, it's going to be up front to start. That's what it sounds like, at least a little bit. But, you know, what's one other thing that you guys are going to have to do really, really well to get the back-to-back? -back? Well, I think I've always said this in big games, it boils down to two things. Uh, protecting the football and not have drive killing or drive extending penalties. If we can do that, we, we knock on wood, we, we've protected the ball pretty well this year. 
uh, and we haven't had those killer penalties in critical situations uh, in, in most of our games. Uh, that being said, you know, their secondary is so long and athletic, it's going to be really difficult to um, get through um, the whole thing without maybe turning the ball over. They're, they're really good. The community has to be excited. I mean, having last year with really nothing in the fall, then the six game abbreviated schedule, they've just got to be over, over the moon excited and the energy level through the roof to get ready for Saturday, aren't they? I hope so. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't want people to get complacent around here. This is, this is an insane run. Uh, I, I have some friends who in the coaching world, I was, I'm friends with Tony Sanchez, who was at Bishop Gorman, and they won six in a row. I'm friends with Tom, uh, Tom Wilson at Dallin Catholic in, in Iowa. They won eight in a row. And they're all like, people don't understand that these are crazy, you know, uh, runs that, that some teams go on. And so I hope we show up in droves on Saturday. I hope that we're excited uh, and uh, the crowd's big like it was last Friday. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, I know I'm not complacent. I, <laughs> I, I am just, you know, please beyond belief that, that here we are one more time, um, you know, in my lifetime, if I'd have got one, I would have been, all right, I'm good. And now I have a chance going at number four is, is insane. Awesome stuff, coach. Well, appreciate the time. I know it's a crazy time of the year trying to get ready for practices and all that kind of stuff, but we appreciate it and we wish you the best of luck on Saturday in the 6A championship game.